Greetings and welcome back to 50 Shades of Beige. Tonight we've just got a quick review for you. I know you guys are itching for some retro content and I promise you it is on the way. We're gonna have a look at the Thermal Right Frozen Nante 360 Black ARGB. This is a 360 millimeter AIO cooler from Thermal Right. For those of you who are not so familiar, Thermal Right has been around since about 2001. Uh, but they've only more recently been making waves on Amazon. They started out really challenging the lower end players in the cooler space like ID cooling and DIY PC. And um, they've gained quite a big, quite a good reputation uh, over the past couple of years. And now they're starting to eat into the market share of the bigger brands like Cooler Master and Asus. So we're gonna have a look at this. Now what makes this particular AIO cooler special is its design and the fact that it's $70. Now for those of you unaware, most AIO coolers, the 360 millimeter variety, start around $90. That's for the absolute cheapest bottom of the barrel ones. And they go up all the way close to $300. And really like even your best and most popular options like from Arctic and things like that, those are gonna be close to 150. So at $70, this could be a real, really good buy, but we're gonna test it out today. Let's do a quick unboxing here. So we've got our radiator here, our three fans, and all of our mounting hardware is gonna be in here. User manual is right here. So your mounting instructions, be sure to check the mounting instructions. Now, this particular cooler is kind of in a sweet spot because it has compatibility with a ton of different uh, CPUs. So anything from AM3, AM4, LGA 11.5X, LGA 1200, LGA 1700, basically anything that's been made over the past 10 to 15 years or so, there's gonna be hardware in this little white box to mount it up, which is fantastic. Let's go ahead and get this guy out of the box here. There's really nothing else left to see in the box itself, so we'll get it out of the way here. Okay, let's take a little bit of a closer look at what came in the box here. So here's the cooler and here's what makes things kind of interesting. Now, if you look at this cooling block design, you'll see how it's circular and it kind of sits up a little bit. That's similar to the design that Asetek uses. Uh, it's very common. In fact, some people even recognize it and they say, oh, that's an Asetek pump because Asetek puts their pumps in the CPU block. In fact, they have a patent on that technology that they enforce rigorously. And the funny thing is, it's not Ace Attack, it's just meant to look like it. Because look right up here, I've never seen a pump put in this particular position. But the pump is actually right here, and you say, well, how do you know that? Here's the power connector right there. So definitely a very interesting design. Once again, this may be more common than I think it is, but I've used dozens of all-in-one liquid coolers. I've seen the pumps come in the block. I've seen the pumps come in the radiator. I've never seen them in between the two lines like this. Very interesting design. In fact, it kind of makes sense because the pump can work as an impeller and a pump at the same time pushing liquid down this way and then pulling the warmer liquid up out of the block that way. One other design aspect that I really like about this is the fact that it comes with the fans already mounted. They're screwed in and ready to go. You might say, well, what if I don't want to use those fans? I don't like the fans to come already pre-installed because I like to put my own fans on. And so that I'd say that's fine and a fair point. However, if you were planning to use your own fans, you'd be spending an extra 30 to $100 on fans. You're probably not going to buy the cheapest 360 mil AIO on Amazon. One last thing I wanted to show you is there's a design accent on the side of the radiator itself. I'll try to get it to show up on camera the best I can. And you can see there, it kind of flashes. There we go. I think that's kind of a cool design. It just, you know, reminds everybody this is a thermal right product, but it's not overly gaudy and it doesn't stand out too much. In fact, you could probably get rid of it quite easily just by putting some electrical tape or something over the top of it if you really don't like it. Now we're going to go ahead and mount this guy up to our test bench. I've got my i9-12900K out and we're going to see how well this AIO cooler can really stand up to uh, some serious heat because 12900K with an unlocked power limit is insanely hot. 
And before I do that, we'll just kind of go over the installation briefly. If you want to skip ahead, I'll leave a timestamp for you for those of you who are a little bit more experienced. One downside to using this type of fan versus some other cooler designs is you have a lot of cables. So what Thermal Right has done here to battle that is they've given you a splitter so that you can connect all three fans up to one fan connector. It's kind of a double-edged sword, I will admit, because you may not want to run three fans off of one fan connector. Yes, it can be done, but it's really not ideal. I would want to run each of these off their own connector. Um, I tend to buy motherboards that have enough fan connectors for that, and I don't mind running the cables. But if you don't want all the extra mess, here's your solution right in the box. All right, and here's all of our mounting hardware and everything like that. If you're doing Intel, you're gonna to wanna to use the Intel bracket for AMD. Make sure you're using the bracket stamped AMD. And there's a really key detail in here I'm going to show you real fast. There are two different heights of standoffs. Oh, and you know what? I don't even need to show you because Thermalrite has already done the work for me. This is a great quality of life improvement for beginners and hopefully uh, I can get this to show up on camera well. If you look right here, they actually have labeled the standoff hardware by the socket. So you see that 17XX? So that means that if you're using a 12th or 13th gen Intel processor, these are the standoffs you're gonna wanna use when you mount up the cooler. You do not wanna get them mixed up. And some of them are very similar in height, especially when you're looking at the difference between uh, LGA 1700 and LGA 1200. The height difference is very similar. But it is enough to where if you install the wrong one, you're going to have problems. Also, props to Thermalrite for including a full tube of their TF7 uh, thermal compound here. I know it doesn't seem like much, but I like to have a full tube. Um, I do buy Arctic MX4 and Thermal Grizzly usually, especially for builds that I'm going to sell to somebody. But it's nice to have a full tube around in case you need to remount down the road or maybe you do a CPU upgrade or something like that. You don't have to worry about getting on Amazon and buying yourself Thermal Compound because Thermalrite already gave it to you. And I would recommend leaving this in this white box along with all the rest of the mounting hardware. Put it somewhere, label it so you don't lose it in case you do an upgrade or motherboard upgrade, CPU upgrade, something like that down the future. You're gonna want the pieces that came in this box. To my knowledge, Thermalrite does not sell mounting hardware separately. Your higher end coolers, like from Noctua and things like that, Noctua will either give you or sell you the mounting hardware if you need it. All right, another thing to take note here of, there is a SATA connector for the fans. So if you don't have a free fan header, you're fine. You can just hook into a SATA drive connector and still power this baby up without having any problems. Once again, another good uh, quality of life thing that Thermal Right has done here. Well, the camera's not really focusing, but you'll see there are three different numbers printed here. You wanna make sure that this is lined up with the right number. Also, another quality of life thing that I love that Thermal Right's done here is they have some double-sided adhesive. So you can put this right on the back of your motherboard and flip it over without the darn backplate falling off the bottom of the motherboard in the process. So props to Thermal Right for that. Okay, so that's the two cent tour of the Thermal Right Frozen Nate 360 mil AIO. Let's go ahead and get our 12900K out here and get it mounted up. All right, I'm in the middle of downloading some benchmarking software and stuff like that. I just wanted to show you what the RGB looks like on this AIO. Overall, pretty serviceable, pretty normal. Um, it can do all the colors. The fans have plenty of LEDs. I really like what Thermalrite did here with the block. This kind of infinity mirror effect looks really nice. The only thing I noticed is the fans are a little loud. It's not an annoying kind of loud. It's just a lot of whooshing for lack of a better word. Uh, let me get these benchmarks installed and let's see how much heat this baby can take. 12900K engaged. All right, and we're just about seven minutes into our burn-in test here. Everything's still looking pretty good. We got a max temp of 84C. Um, everything's cool as a cucumber over here with the AIO. I can feel the heat coming off of the radiator. Uh, the fans aren't terribly loud. The pump doesn't whine or anything like that. So. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the performance. This isn't a super scientific benchmark. Our goal here is to just see how the AIO operates and to make sure that there are no major functional deficiencies before I give it a recommendation. And I would say at $70, 
you probably can't go wrong here, but let's go ahead and finish up the benchmarks and we'll see you in a minute. All right, so in conclusion here, the uh, Frozen Nate 360 is a pretty good all-in-one liquid cooler, especially if you're looking for a cooler on a budget. I really got no complaints on my end. I think uh, overall, it's pretty great. And if you can get it for less than $90, I'd say go for it. Anyway, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you soon.